Uh, good morning, class. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, questions about assignment uh, in Unit 5, uh, Activity 5, the assignment. Uh, it's a chain rule uh, assignment, uh, so lots of pretty serious functions uh, with respect to calculating derivatives of. So I'm going to try and answer as many questions as possible today. I, I do understand that the assignment is due uh, today, and uh, certainly it can be handed in tomorrow if you still need some additional help with it. Okay, so um, here goes. Uh, here's the assignment as we see it here. Uh, question number one um, is uh, done with uh, pretty straightforward just rewriting the the derivative so that it is by way of exponents. So I think that's correct. Uh, that function is rewritten as uh, 7 plus x to the power of 3 halves. And then that whole um, <clears throat> bigger, I'd call it a bigger function, or that whole main function is then raised to the power of 1 half. The chain rule suggests that you take the derivative of the uh, big function uh, first, and that's represented here in this little uh, step. It, then you multiply uh, the derivative of that inside function with respect to x. Okay. So this derivative is taken just by bringing the 1 half, okay, bringing this 1 half down. Okay. So 1 half is the power. Then that inside function is then raised to the negative 1 half power. Okay, that's just, just a straight power rule application. And the derivative okay, okay, of this inside function is again uh, by another application of the power rule. That's just bringing, okay, the 7 is a neglected element. Uh, and so it's just basically just then the, the, the second part of this question just is the derivative of uh, x to the power of 3 halves. And that, as we know by now, is just the coefficient is 3 over 2. That's the exponent, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent, so it's 3 over 2 x to the 1 half. <clears throat> this is a bit of a mess, but the negative 1 half in the first part of this question goes down to the, okay, goes down to the denominator. Okay? Um, you multiply the coefficients together, so 1 times 3 is 3 over top of 2 times 2 is 4. Then in the numerator, it's the square root of x, which is okay, this x to the power 1 half is here. Okay. And then this expression is rewritten as the square root of 7 plus the square root of x to the power of 3. I think some of the problem is just trying to handle this huge function or really strange function that we really don't have any idea what it's all about. Uh, rewriting it as an exponent and then breaking it into okay, uh, derivative parts, chaining across a chain rule It's important. Okay, that this and this element are exactly the same. That's the part that's chained across. Okay, and then there are some issues and problems. I know students have some issues and problems with <clears throat> rewriting it and trying to simplify this expression. Okay, we proceed. Question number two. Please assume in question number two that the question is asking for when you are 30 years old. So real real quickly, uh, most of you are probably around 17 or 18. If, assume that you're 18 years old, that's then 30 minus your age, let t equal 12 in this case. So really you're just finding the world's population using this formula, okay, when for, for the first part uh, you're finding uh, the world's population when you are 30 years old, that's 12 years from your, okay, Twelve years from that. Uh, uh, all right, we're gonna, we're going to change this around. Okay, could be found. Uh, okay, I'm going to okay assume that this is. Let me just change this quick on the fly here. I'm going to assume that this is okay. 2009 and 2009. Okay, so you're going to find the population. Okay, at 12 based on this f function. So p at 12 uh, equals, okay, and we'll use 2009 as a reference point. Now you can change that around. For a question like this, don't get too bogged down by uh, by uh, the final answer. I do look at the process that was that you that you used uh, to get that final answer. So I really do look in depthly at, at the the solutions here. Okay, and the second part of this is um, finding the derivative of the function. Something you should be able to do. 
okay? And then evaluating that derivative at 12, at, again, t equals 12, okay? So assume that in 2009, you're 17 or 18, so that in 30 years or 12 more years, or at the age of 30, let's say in 12 more years, that this is the equation that you're going to be using. Okay, uh, question number three. Uh, here's the function. Okay. I'll change my highlighter here. Here's the function. Okay, you do want to find the rate of change at t equals 7. You need to find the derivative of the function. There's another chain rule application. Again, pretty straightforward. Take the derivative of the sine function, whatever it is, and then to take the derivative of that inner function here. So the, the derivative of this function here is just cos of that function, but you have to make sure you multiply it by the derivative of that inside function. Then you have a factor of, of 2.5. Then um, to finish it off, just evaluate this uh, derivative, the function of the derivative at, it, uh, at t equals 7. But please make sure um, that you change your calculator mode to radians. Okay, question number four. Um, Again, just an editing error, just bear with me. That needs to be 600. Nope, 60. And therefore, this is where the mistake is down here. My apologies. Okay, the yield is just the apple trees planted per hectare uh, minus or multiplied by the average yield per tree. Uh, you can let x equal each additional tree that's planted per hectare. You get a a yield formula in terms of x uh, to be 60 plus x. So if I increase or add additional trees, the <clears throat> the average yield goes down by, by 5. So 60 plus x multiplied by 500 minus 5x. Working all this out, finding the derivative of a really straightforward function, <clears throat> setting that derivative equal to 0 gives a maximum yield amount. Okay, that's all the help I can give you with that question. That should be straightforward in number 4. Okay, and finally, number five, you're just going to get a little talk through on this one. Um, I have given lots of hints, or a good, pretty solid hint, and this is a real thinking question. I think I'm going to evaluate this uh, question out of about four and really look for uh, people really thinking, uh, doing some problem solving on this one. This is a term that we don't talk about in the class, but it's called implicit differentiation. Basically, you take the derivative of both sides of the equation, use the chain rule, okay, to take follow through with the derivative, and then solve for uh, dy dx, right? That's what you're trying to find. Then you use your result, okay, in 5a to see if you can apply um, your your implicit differentiation solution here to, to finding a uh, ln of, of x to the power of 3 and then uh, using a okay, product rule, okay, where the function is uh, the first part of the product is x and the second part of the the product is ln of 2x. Good luck with this one. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm expecting uh, uh, an attempt at this, and, and certainly uh, I'll give as, as many marks as I, as I can uh, based on uh, the thought process that goes through this solution. Thanks, and good luck.